We're here at the NEP rewilding project in southern England, where I'll be joining museum entomologist Dr. Erica McAllister to find out how specimens go from the field to the collection. To start, we need a pooter and a net. So we are now here with Erica, who is going to show us how we use both the net and the pooter to, to catch, um, catch insects. So take it away. So this is a very active method of catching, and you become one with the net. <laughs> oh, so, uh, and this is when you realise that you don't like people because you need to spread out as much as possible. So I'm going to walk through here, and I'm going to show you. So we we sweep in a figure of eight moment like that. So the figure of eight. And often you really have to bash the vegetation because the insects get their little tarsi really in. Quickly so on time. They do, they really do, <laughs> especially the ones you really want. <laughs> so you walk along, sweep, 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 sweep like that, till maybe about 10 sweeps, and then you don't do that. Because? Look, everything. <laughs> did you see that? That's <laughs> as nature showing like me exactly. Perfect. So you don't do that. So you either. Pooter in hand, mm -hmm. okay, very shuck, straight in there like that. Yep. Okay, with your arms up, so everything goes up. Or if you're not ninja enough, you can do that and do a quick flip. Do a wrap around. Quick flip. Keep everything in. Keep everything in, and then you can slightly pooter at your leisure. Hmm, nice. So. And away we go. Yeah, let me just do on that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, so go on then, yep, become go on. one. Become one with it. I'm not judging egg. you. <laughs> yeah, you are. Oh, it's... Bash, 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 bash. Bash. Some tiny little flies. Oh, you got a lot of seeds. Yeah, so we've got... Oh, that's a bug. OK, so you've got bugs there. You've got a lot of seeds here. I know. Doesn't OK, seed these are grass flies, no, which, it's... funny enough, <laughs> they do exactly what their name does. Yeah, and keep your hand over, because all these nice ones will come back. I don't think there are very many nice ones in here. They're all nice. <laughs> <laughs> They're all nice. So we would do this for about half an hour. Yep. We would disperse around the habitat. We would nibble at all the edges. And then we would take some readings. Go on then. Oh, you don't want that. No, I'm not going to poo to the moth. No, but look, there's loads of... Loads of things. Look at you know that little cute fly. Wee. Cute. Delicious. That's a lace wing. Ooh, that's oh. cool. Oh, it's so there's a type of neuroptera. Sorry, little one. So there's the lace wing. Oh, here's a little chunky fly. And this is why um, most of these can't be identified in the field. Because, because how do you see? Yes. <laughs> what is they're, they're really genuinely quite small. <laughs> so how we collect what we do for the next uh, point. Some bonking beetles. There's some bonking beetles. These are chrysomelids, <laughs> yep. Excellent. Doing what nature intended. I like the fact that the males just hang on whatever. Just go for it. Like the poor females just still trying to, you know, get Jump off away. Get yeah, sort them out of danger and the males are just there doing that. So yeah, you would just keep doing that and keep doing that until I tell you to stop. Thanks go on then, off you go. Oh, 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 we're going here. We're not judging. <laughs> oh, it's we are now back at the Natural History Museum after having collected some insect samples out in the field at NEP. So Erica has already been going through some of these samples, but let's go and find out what she's been up to. So Erica, what are we up to here? What stage are we now at? So we've put the specimens that we collected in NEP. They've mm -hmm. been in the freezer. Okay. So they've gone through a quarantine procedure. Why do we do that? We make sure that we don't bring any pests into the collection. Okay. Okay, Makes that sense. would be awful if we did <laughs> Quite that. Quite terrible. So yes, and this, is the pin collection mm -hmm. from this year's field work at NEP. Nice. Approximately 
four and a half thousand specimens Ooh. there. Over what period did we? So it? that was a month and a half, six weeks. Wow. Okay. So yes, just to kind of show you the effort. And these are all the labels. <laughs> That's there we go. Quite a lot. These are the labels that basically give us our location, okay. our date, our time, mm -hmm. sampling method, etc., and Latin long. Really important data. Wow. And then this is our legal bit. Okay. So this has an accession number associated with it. So when I've registered that material and all mm -hmm. the spirit material, it's got a specific number that we can trace all of that to. And also I attach the permits to that number. Wow. Yeah. So we were every collection that comes in now, we will make sure it's got its legal mm -hmm. governance. So we were like, yes, mm -hmm. we've collected these with permission. And that's for every single one of the four and a half thousand. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and each one will get a little barcode. Okay, so a third one. Third one, absolutely. <laughs> a, th a little barcode. And you see there's a QR co mm -hmm. QRL codes. And they will go on the bottom underneath all of those. And that links to that individual specimen. Okay, and that is then stored on a database online? A database, which gets migrated online, so you at home, in the evening, you can go, look, there's my <laughs> specimen, the that came from and there. you can see it. Well, curators do like their labels, don't they? <laughs> well, no, we, 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 there's no point collecting unless we've actually made sure. All the data. So if I was to drop down dead, oh, um, we know everything we can about this specimen mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. that. It's all linked. And I will add more information to the accession record electronically so everyone will have a clue. So we were out in the field, in net. Um, do you know which specimens that we collected whilst we were out there? Of course I do. So each of these little crystal boxes mm -hmm. has a series of flies and other insects. And at the end of a series, there'll be a label and there's a code and a date. So I know that which correlates with which mm -hmm. one. And so that's very handy. So the day you came, these are your ones, nice. and that's your row of flies and other insects that you collected. Do you recognise them? I do. Yes. Absolutely. So now we have to take these out. Mm -hmm. We have to label them, barcode them, and then I will add them to a database. Mm -hmm. So first steps, you've got to cut up some labels. Excellent. Okay. So... <laughs> So where we go? Here we go. So this is what sample? C27. C27, right. So that is C, that's A27. Okay, yeah. Can you see, can you read these? Just, just about. <laughs> like, I know, it's because it's, they, have, they have to, we're very good at running into small things. Here you go. This is C27. Oh, okay, yep. So these are the labels associated with that. So um, can you use the gelatine or scissors? You have to use a very straight line if you're going to oh. do this. <laughs> I know, you might have to keep a watchful eye. Okay, I don't think I can watch. <laughs> don't muck it up. Oh, no. The world is watching. No, I've got so much pressure. I know. So yeah, so... so it's to that. To, to this, so yeah, yeah. Okay. You can see the light. So you can go, f if you're doing this one, mm -hmm. you can go forward to about there on that line. And about there, and hold it down. Do you want me to do it? Yeah, go for it. See, I, I, may, <laughs> I may have done this before. <laughs> right, so you can now go along and cut these up. It's a bit like, um, what does entomology describe it? It's like arts and crafts. You just need some with PVA some glue. Yeah, well, we have PVA glue. <laughs> so Maybe some pipe cleaners somewhere. Uh, I think we are, I don't know, maybe taxonomy will, uh, taxidermy will have quite a few Right, if you want to cut up some of those labels, okay. So and I'll do some of these labels over here. You're going... Punch them up. So if you make a nice little pile of which ones you're doing there. So we're going from the UK, England, oh God, they're so closely... Don't you have to be? Four and a half thousand labels, there's a lot of labels to put on paper. Lots of so. And all the little bits of paper I don't waste, these mm -hmm. all become labels for future collections. So efficient. So yes, so I've got so thousands efficient. of little bits of card all over me. <laughs> oh, 
Obviously, in time, just... you'll speed up. <laughs> Please slow it. <laughs> I think by comparison, you should do it. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> how quickly well, can how you go? How many have you done? I've done five. Do you know what? Let's leave it at five then. <laughs> and what we need then is... So five of these... So I, I like a, I'm a bit like a Ford production line. So I line up my labels in a row. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you'd say do five of these then. You should see me with Skittles. I line all them up in the colours <laughs> to make sure they're all correct. Um, wait there. This is painful to watch. <laughs> it's painful to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you not get cramp doing this? You have to do it like every like half an hour. Just like walk away. Five. Like, and then we've got special lumps on our fingers you now. Get calluses. Where we where we've been using forceps too much. Dedicated okay. to the cause. So five, yeah. Line them up next to right them. Next to these ones. And then can I have five barcodes in a row, please? Exactly the same. Um, so how speedy are you now at doing this? How can how many can you get through in one day? Uh, it depends. I will slow down dramatically depending on what they are. Okay. If you've got, if you know you've got some really unusual species or specimens, you're like, ooh, very <laughs> you careful. Take your time. <laughs> take your time. What counts as unusual specimen? Just something that is rare or? Yep. So it's something I won't know. So it's something that I don't recognise. So you're getting better already. Right. Yep, yeah, that's it, perfect. <laughs> we do, thankfully, have quite a lot of volunteers who help us. I can see that doing, yeah, speeding so things the, up. Exactly, if you think about how many collections there are and how much mm. data we need to process. Yeah, because I think it's quite important to note that this is just for one collection, isn't it? Yeah, this is just one little collection. Right, so next we're using these little new poly strips. Okay, mm -hmm. and we try and make them the same size as the object. Okay. So these are quite, your ones are quite big. So I will, well, you cut them in half and then cut them in half again. Okay. You should see our stationary cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> Of the these. thing of dreams. Yes, it is. It's like, oh, what's that for? <laughs> Don't lose them. I, I didn't. Mum. <laughs> right. You done those? Yes. So now you've got to make these. So what we do... Okay, you kind of want... Them like that. Okay. Okay. So they're nice and flat. So you do a row of them. Try it, the flat end poking mm -hmm. out. Yep. So do that and do a range of sizes. Do them in a little row. And these are what the samples will then sit on. Sit on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So these are stainless steel pins. Mm -hmm. um, ugh, we have gone through so many pins in our history. <laughs> In fact, there's some excellent talks of pins used in Natural History Museum collections. And um, there's some specimens that have got acacia thorns used instead of pins. Oh, wow. So the early Australian <laughs> collections and things like that. So different, you know, when they've run out of something. Using the what field, they had, yeah, They've exactly. just gone for it. And a lot of people were like pins without heads. There's the, the British pin, which was too big for the drawers. We're now onto European <laughs> pins. Yeah, honestly. Do different collectors have different... Yes. Favourites, okay. And we have to be careful, they have to be steel because otherwise they corrode and they corrode with the specimen mm. and you get what is called verdigris. You may have seen this, this is this green, yes. like, you know, thing exploding from the specimen. Oh wow, and that's because of the... That's because of the pins, they've mm. reacted with the lipids in the insect. Mm. So although they, they're not really fatty things, there can be it, some that are... There's enough there to yeah. cause it. Right, so now, tricky bit. Okay, so you're now using 
your firm forceps. Mm -hmm. We're taking out any micro pins that have been used to hold the wings. Okay. Okay, so there's a few more there. Mm -hmm. Is that and presumably then, so that when you're pulling it out, you don't damage? Absolutely. If you damage them now, it's heartbreaking. Okay. So, not saying <laughs> no anything. No pressure. Yeah, not saying anything. <laughs> so what you can do then is that you very delicately see where the pin is and you want to do it on the pin mm -hmm. the most of the insect is protected. Okay. So you've got the antennae and whatever. And because these are quite fat, we can separate them actually. Okay. So you don't damage them as well. So if you just want to do those, there's still some micro pins for you to remove mm -hmm. there and carry on doing that. No pressure. Oh no. You must have very good eyesight. I've got three pairs of glasses. But I, I'm, I'm really good at things like this, but I walk into trees and fall down holes. <laughs> so good with the little things, not the it's big there, things. I just don't do the big things. But you know, somebody else is there to look after me, adulting. Yep, that's fine. Where is the pin? Oh God, I just feel like I'm going to damage things. Is Are you that, being quite firm? Is that allowed? Yeah. There we go. Well done for your first pin. Ooh. That one. You can now work here. I'm never allowed to leave. So my That's little one. setup in my little home lab is I've got hundreds of these in a row and all the labels, hundreds of them in a row, and I would just go through really and um, make sure all the barcodes are already in and the data labels so I can just process everything just to kind of make it as quick as possible. Um, and how many years have you been doing this? A uh, few. We don't ask ladies. <laughs> I feel like I've done this in a horribly sporadic manner. No, it doesn't but... matter. I, I go for the size. Okay. So yeah, so even if they're not, then when I get to the labelling bit, they all get put together again. So now we've done that, excellent. Mm -hmm. Now we come to the critical point of making the labels on them. So these are unit trays, mm -hmm. okay? And these are especially made for the museum because okay. these are acid-free paper. The mm -hmm. glue is something that um, we can utilize. We've got these um, plastisoaks in it. So mm -hmm. everything about it is museum grade. So it's basically completely inert. It's not going Absolutely. to Absolutely. So again, with the drawers, mm -hmm. they don't off-gas anything. Mm -hmm. So it ensures the longevity of all these specimens. Okay. So now we take one of these specimens, we use the pinning stage. That's oh, better I know, I love this bit. So you go <laughs> like that. In fact, let's turn this round so it's in order. You go like that. You go like that. And then, oh, we should have done these the other way around. Because yeah. these have to go like that. And then they go flat Stick like out. that. Okay. So we now have them at a set level. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so this is good. This specimen so is now. Then you can, whilst it's in the drawer, you can read what information is on it. Yeah. So we have now little handheld uh, readers. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants a loan mm -hmm. and we were like, okay, do, do, do. Beep, 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 it's like a supermarket. It's like being in the shops. Absolutely, you can go shopping <laughs> for your different insects. Have a you little trolley. Yeah, hello. Hello. <laughs> and so we can actually catalogue the movement. So mm -hmm. in the future, if NEP ever want to see what happens to any of their mm -hmm. specimens, they can go, hold on, it's been used in this publication. Right, it's okay. been used in that publication. Well. And so people who have like different countries who want to understand how their biodiversity has been mm -hmm. looked at, studied, these are perfect records of how we can do it. Well. Go for it. Oh God, again. Okay, so we go. Oh, how deep does exactly. it go? Exactly, move it, yeah, be very one. good. <laughs> and so it's this one? Yep. So all in a line, all in a line. Where's your ducks, young man? Ooh. You're facing that way and your label's facing oh, that yeah, way. Oh, yeah, okay. Ooh, I wasn't even thinking about that. Ooh. Oh, you've got to keep it on the ball. Oh, now I've done it too, oh. too close and I don't want to push it. Remember, people have got to read this label in 300 years. Oh. 
And then we go with the next one. Yeah. Nice and firm, straight, one hole, that's it. This one, does it really yep, matter? Yeah, go in. Cool. Okay, line them up, thank you. I can't line them up. You can line them up, Josh. <laughs> there we go, it's done. There we go. And then the barcode. Yeah. Sticking no, out. no, 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 so this one, mm -hmm. ha yeah, has to go, so it's that code is next to the label. So when you look down, Mm -hmm. You can see the barcode from above. Okay. So it's got to be... So yeah. it has to be something like that. Absolutely. <laughs> Just press hard. I feel like I'm going to break, damage Don't break the, the specimen. specimen. I know. Oh, there we go. Um, Actually, that can go all the way up because... Okay. It's going to lie flat with the other one. Mm. Have you found the hole? I've got it. Here we go. Right. Like that. So kind of, well, look, yes, it's okay. Right. It's all a bit, all it's a all bit, a bit squiff. squiff, but yeah. we can tighten it up. Right. So now, when that, we know what I would do now is add mm -hmm. these data yep. to a spreadsheet, those barcodes in. That's, you know what that is. It's a football fly. It's the footballer. Yeah, well done. <laughs> so this oh, is right. Holophilus pendulus. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not a fly. No. Why not? it's got four wings exactly so i will send that upstairs with the rest of the non-flies okay. to the other curators but i will be able to present them a nice database everything done so they and could they just, just need to log it and then put it in the collection absolutely and then that goes in there for the moment so we've just um added the data and the context to a couple of these pin specimens um and then what is the next step after this next step is to add them to a database. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is a database that will get um, added to the collection management system for the museum. And then a couple of weeks later, that will then get uploaded to the web. Mm. So you will be able to go away and look and at your little specimens. Google the barcode yes, and find exactly. the exact same specimen. Exciting. And then the next stage for the actual specimens mm -hmm. is I will take out the three non-flies. Okay. They will get put in a separate drawer to be given to my colleagues, all nicely done. And then I will try and identify our flies to families. Mm -hmm. And they get split amongst the fly curators, okay. whoever's specialism is what. We add our identifications to them, and then they go next door into the collection. So we've just done 10 specimens from one row in one crystal box. Crystal box. Yeah. So I've now got another 4,400 pin species, specimens, sorry, to go. Mm -hmm. So all of that labeling, mm -hmm. all of that databasing, they will go into all of those unit trays, all those drawers to get sorted by all these different people. So there's quite a few months of work just on this desk. So that was amazing. We've seen how a single specimen can go from the field to the collection and all the time and effort it takes to make that happen. And if you would like to see some of the specimens that we collected whilst in NAB, you can head on over to the NHM data portal.